What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Lab. Now I know that you guys are used to us looking at the low to mid tier graphics cards, particularly recently when we've been taking a look at what AMD has to offer for the entry level. But in today's video, we're gonna mix things up a little bit and we're gonna go completely to the other side of the stack with this. Now we've recently splashed out a little bit and this is the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT and it is a little more than AMD's entry level. In fact, we've moved completely from the bottom of AMD's current stack offering all the way up to the top to the ultra enthusiast. And so far, we haven't been disappointed. Now the model that we picked up is obviously from PowerColor, but it is an AMD reference model. It looks just like this and it is absolutely gorgeous. I love this design all the way through and it's very similar, if not exactly the same as the XTX, but this one is a little bit lower when it comes to price. The card itself is a three fan system with a dual slot, although it's probably more than dual and a half more than anything. And this great big cooler in between, which actually adds massive to the weight even though this graphics card is actually smaller than most of the models that are coming out there and it is particularly smaller than our current 3070 ti it does have a ridiculous weight to it this card comes in at about 1.5 kilograms and that is because it is completely built with metal shrouds all the front here is actually metal all the way through and you've got the same on the back. Now compress that with a great big cooler in between. You're actually going to get quite a heavy graphics card. I'm not 100% sure if that's good or bad for GPU sag yet because we've only been using this vertically mounted in our test bench, but I'm sure we'll see when we actually come to fit it in the system. There were a few things that I was a little bit disappointed with when I actually first got this card. And to be honest, they're not important things because the card worked perfectly fine but it was missing certain things that you get used to when you buy new graphics cards. The one is actually the PCI slot kind of protector. You get the little dust protectors on them. Well, they don't come with them. Maybe they're trying to save money or save the planet. I'm not quite sure. And they also didn't include the little dust covers that you get inside the ports on the back. Now that is a little bit disappointing, but I did reach out on social media and a number of people came back and said that tends to be more of a power color thing. So maybe if I'd have picked up a different model like the Sapphire one, that would have actually come with them. But again, it doesn't actually take away from the card we just like them because of obviously handling the cards a lot in the studio it helps to keep things protected but for the average gamer it's not going to make a difference there were a couple of options of these that i could have chosen from when we were actually purchasing it I did go for the power color version. I could have picked up the Sapphire one just as much. They were both reference models and they're pretty much exactly the same, but I opted to go for power color because we haven't had anything like that in the studio before. So I thought it was worth picking up and it probably didn't cost as much as you think, even though these were actually released for a around a 900 pounds MSRP and you barely could get them for that when they actually released. They've actually recently had a price drop. These are now dropping quite rapidly and I managed to pick this up for just 800 pounds. Now I know that sounds a lot for an AMD graphics card and it probably is but currently with the market the way it is it's actually not bad for the performance you're getting compared to other brands underneath this ridiculously heavy cooling system which by the way works flawlessly as per our testing you have a navi 31 processor built on the latest rdna3 architecture a boost clock speed of 2400 megahertz and a game clock speed of 2000 megahertz even though we actually had this card running a lot higher than that when we were doing our testing so not 100% sure what was going on there. Along with all of that, it is RAM pack full of VRAM. This card currently has 20 gigabytes of GDDR6, which is absolutely amazing, even though some games do still kind of complain at you, or at least give you a little bit of a warning. This is kind of one of them cards where I think games are going to have to start catching up now because it performs exceptionally well. And I know you guys want to see some of the benchmarks. Now there is a caveat to the benchmarks that we've actually run with this card because it is actually so powerful. We don't really have a CPU in the studio that can keep up with it. So when you see the 1080p results, which we have left inside the actual benchmarks for you to see, a lot of them do actually hit a CPU bottleneck. So take them with a little bit of a pinch of salt. We didn't see any issues with the 1440p or the 4K results. We were actually exceptionally surprised with the results of this card. But anyway, let's roll those benchmarks.
So as you can see for those results, this card had no problem running any of those games in any of the resolutions. 1080p was a slight bottleneck on most of the games, to be honest. So we kind of hit limitations there. But when we changed that resolution to 1440p or 4K, it really allowed this card to open up because the CPU was kind of taken out of the equation. Now, this card is exceptionally fast. I don't really have anything to compare it to, but according to the results we got there, it's going to be plenty for pretty much anybody using one. It in fact actually takes the gaming that I'm currently doing from a 1080p to 1440p kind of gaming experience all the way up to 4K, and it will play all of the games that I play perfectly fine at that resolution. When it came to temps, this card actually performed exceptionally well as well. The cooling system on this, particularly the fans on it, obviously do a fantastic job because we kind of averaged around 50 degrees, even when under 100% load during benchmarking. With that slightly rise into around 60 now and again but it completely depended on what the card was doing and then the junction temperatures the junction temperatures were perfectly fine on this we did have a few people that reached out to us before we actually started this video and asked us if there was going to be any problems with the super high temperatures that are seen on the XTX. Now, I don't believe that these cards actually suffer from that, and we didn't see it in any of our testing anyway. So I think you're going to be fine if you actually pick up an XT instead of an XTX. Maybe they've fixed that issue now. I don't quite know. Now, of course, having a card with such power, we wanted to try some ray tracing. We didn't do any extensive testing, but we did a little bit, and we were actually quite pleased with the results. We finally managed to get Portal RTX running, and we actually got it running on an AMD graphics card, which is quite amazing, really. It didn't run 100% great, but you could play it and you could see the ray tracing effects there. If you actually dropped the settings down to low, it didn't really affect the quality of the picture that much and it run a hell of a lot smoother. So that's a win so far for the Radeon. We're probably going to be doing some more extra ray tracing testing soon on this. So make sure you subscribe if you want to catch that. Another game that we did try was obviously Cyberpunk. When actually running Cyberpunk without ray tracing, the card absolutely creams it just like it would do on any of the games. And when you kind of enable ray tracing, you can get playable experiences out of it. Even in a 1440p setting with ray tracing enabled, you can get nearly 60 frames per second off this card. So I think AMD have come a long way when it comes to that. I am extremely happy with this card and I think AMD are making some great progress. It is a shame that AMD are really focusing on the high end at the moment and only bringing this architecture there, particularly when it's going to cost you eight to nine hundred pounds just to enjoy it but i am hoping that they're going to be bringing out some of the rdna3 low rank cards soon because we'd love to get some of them on the channel too and now we at least have a baseline to start comparing things don't forget to let me know in the comments below what do you think about the new amd radeon 7000 series is it something that you would consider picking up or is it just way too expensive and you're not even going to bother at the moment there isn't any sign of the next intel generation but nvidia are releasing their 40 series one at a time the competitors to this card roughly are the either the rtx 4080 or the rtx 4070 ti the 4070 ti will roughly cost you around this price of card i'm not 100 percent sure how much they are at the moment moment because MSRP is a kind of a thing of the past now it kind of depends on what the store wants to charge for them whereas the 4080 is a lot more expensive than this and kind of performs very similar I'm sure at some point we'll get one of those cards and we'll be able to have a little bit of a battle light between them don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and you if you want to see where we take this card next but until then we'll catch you in the next one